Hello, hello! Today I've got amazing Canvas workspace tutorial for you where I'm going to show you how to create a theatre themed personalized card. If you like it, I'm going to show you step by step how to create it. So let's open Canvas workspace and create a very cool card. So my very first step is to go to the shapes on the left hand side and I'm going to choose a square. And I want my card to be 7 inches, so dragging from the very bottom corner, I'm going to make sure this 7 inches long. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 inches. And now I'm going to color it with, let's say, light yellow. I usually do it for my card bases. So now I'm going to duplicate it, so right click, duplicate, and I can keep it on the right hand side for later. So let's create first elements. So I'm going to do the square again, and this time I'm going to make it wider. When I'm happy with it, I'm also going to make it smaller here. And let's see, yeah, they are exactly the same. So I'm going to color this one with a darker brown. So going to the bucket, and let's find, yeah, I'm happy with this one, darker brown. Then I'm going to do another rectangle, so I clicked on the square on the left hand side and I'm going to put this one here. And I'm going to make it wider so they actually fit and I'm going to put it like this. Okay, let's check the measurements, I'm happy with it. And I'm going to color this one with a lighter brown. Let's have a look, let's choose this one. Okay, so my last one here will be darker brown again. So as you can see, this is my card base. But that, I'm very happy with it at the moment. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. So let's go here. And I think I need to make this one slightly bigger. But first I'm going to click on it, keep a shift key and the bottom panel. And let's do center. Yes, they are exactly the same. Perfect. I just wanted to check. So when I'm happy with it, I'm going to duplicate my yellow again because I will need quite a lot of them. So this is the base for our theater, the brown color, right? So I'm going to highlight all of it and put it to the side just for now. I'm going to bring my yellow panel, which is exactly the same size as the brown we created. Now, let's create some beautiful fabrics. So, going to the shapes on the left hand side, I'm going to scroll down and let's get an ellipse. This one, I'm pretty happy with it. So, I'm going to place it on my shape, but I'm going to make it smaller. And yes, let's make it even smaller. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to do the right click and I'm going to duplicate it. And I will need, let's say, seven of them. So again, I'm going to duplicate, put it next to this one. Again, duplicate. I just want to cover the top bits. Let's see how that goes. So as you can see, I will need a couple of them. And let's have one more just to finish it off. Okay, but as you can see, I'm not very sure if there are evenly spaced. So what we can do, I'm going to put my <laughs> arrow here and I'm going to highlight just the top elements. And when I'm happy with it, on the right hand side, we've got distribute objects and I'm going to click on horizontal distribute center. And now every single one is even, and that's what I wanted. But are they on the same line? Probably not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here. And as you can see, they are all lined beautifully. My next step is to go to the shapes on the right hand side, and I'm going to weld them. So I've got one shape. Now I'm going to highlight, actually no, let's duplicate the yellow one and put it to the side. We're going to duplicate it a couple of times. So let's highlight the shape we just created holding the shift key. I'm going to click on the yellow background. And again, I'm going to click, I just need it to be in center. 
Okay, let's click on divide. Okay, so what I need, I literally need that shape here. So I'm going to click here and delete those shapes. But I'm not very happy with how it looks like at the top. So what we can do, we can go back to the shapes, get a rectangle, and let's create a, the same width as we've got with the shape we created. Let's zoom in just to have a look. Okay, let's move it slightly. Okay, I'm happy. Let's highlight them and go to weld. So that is my top panel. When this is ready, I'm going to zoom out so you can actually see more elements. And now I can color this panel and I'm going to choose, let's say, light red. And I'm going to put that on the top of my fiat scene. Now, taking the yellow square we've got, now it is time to create some side panels. First, I'm going to use a rectangle. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to place it here. I'm going to make it slightly longer. Yes, I'm happy with it. And I'm going to use one of the shapes. Which one? Let's go to rectangles and choose this rectangle in the middle. I really like the shape at the bottom. So what I can do, I can make it longer. Okay, let's move the yellow away so you can see what I'm doing. So as you can see, I want that, let's say, wavy frame around, but it goes over the rectangle. But now when I'm going to highlight the shape and the rectangle here, I'm going to divide them as well. So this way, when I move it, I have this shape. And that's exactly what I wanted. And it will go on the side of my panels. So let's delete those two here. So highlight them and do the backspace. And I'm going to color this one with, let's say, uh, maybe fuchsia color. Why not? So when I highlight it, I'm going to do double click, duplicate, and I'm happy with it. So let's move those to the very bottom so you will know what to do with them when you create your own theater scene. Okay. Let's put them here. So one will go on the left hand side and one on the right. Okay, I'm happy with it at the moment. Or maybe we can make them slightly longer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight both. And let's drag the middle panel here. Okay, now it looks better. <laughs> now I like it. Okay, let's go back to the very top. And let's create another yellow rectangle so duplicate because we just need it for later and this time we're going to create some curtains so what i'm going to do on the left hand side let's go to ellipse again and i really like this one here so let's put this one here let's rotate it so as you can see there is a white circle at the top let's click on it and rotate and I'm going to move it here. I'm going to make it slightly longer. Okay, and when I'm happy with it, yes, I'm just going to leave it. Now we can go to the other ellipse and I'm going to rotate this one again, like so. I am pretty happy with it. So now I'm going to click on both of them. I'm going to highlight them. And I'm going to weld them. So this is one shape. So as you can see, we've got some kind of a curtain here. But we need to make sure that it actually just cuts like with the edge, not the whole oval. So what we can do, I'm going to click on the shape we created, hold the shift key, highlight the yellow square and do divide. So now I should have that element. And that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so let's delete those panels here. And with the curtain here, what we can do, we can actually add that edge as well. So let's go back all the way to the rectangle, the middle one here on the left hand side, 
And let's use that here to create that really nice effect at the bottom. So I'm going to highlight both and divide. So I should have that element here. So what do you think about this? Do you like it? I really hope you do. So now I'm going to delete those two bottom elements, highlighting and clicking on the backspace on my keyboard. And let's have a look how it goes on my theater scene. Let's put it here. Okay, I like it. Now let's color it with red. Hmm. Yes, it's good. We do have some dimension. So what I'm going to do now, let's do right click, duplicate, and let's do edit and also flip horizontal. So that's how a theater scene is going to look like at the moment. But I think it looks pretty empty. So what we can do, we can actually create some people using just the shapes. And I can tell you, it is super easy. So let's do it. Let's scroll down. And I really like the purple shapes. I think they are very cool. So I'm going to click on the shape here. And I'm going to rotate it. And I need to make it smaller. So first, when I rotate it, then let's make it smaller. As you can see, it's not very straight. Let's just do it. You can always use the angle panels as well, and that will be fine. Okay, let's make it even smaller. Okay, am I happy with it? Let's zoom in and check on the theater scene. Would that be good? Maybe we can make our person slightly bigger. Yes, I'm happy with it. So, let's zoom in and let's create some people. So as you can see, that will be the back of our person. And here we've got a really cool head we can use. So let's put that shape here and I'm going to rotate it. But now we have to make it smaller so it actually is the head of a person. And we're going to create a silhouette. Okay, so I'm happy with it at the moment. And let's create a neck. We definitely need a neck. So what we can do, we can use any rectangular shape, just make it slightly smaller. But before I do it, I'm going to highlight those two shapes and I'm going to duplicate them for later. Oh, let's go back. Okay, and I'm going to put them to the side and I'm going to actually create a couple of them. So Control C, Control V. So this will be the way to create our people. So as you can see, we already have a couple of them, but we need to add some details, right? Okay, let's do it again. Let's copy this person, paste. Let's do it again. Okay, do we have enough? Okay, I think we should. So what we can do, we can actually add the neck, not even the neck, we can actually add some hair. So let's make the neck first. So I'm going to rotate that shape. Oh, let's zoom in so we can see better. Let's rotate. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to place it on the person. And what you can do here, you can always make sure it's nice and straight. So let's highlight and go here. Distribute objects. Okay, maybe not, but this person can actually look from the side. So let's rotate the head and put it slightly lower, like this. I'm happy with it. So what we can do now, we can actually add some hair. Let's do it, right? So we can use the same head shape. Just move it here, make it smaller and rotate. That would be a very big um, hairline. So let's just make it smaller and put it here. Okay, now I'm going to highlight all of it and make the shape join together. So let's click on the weld. Okay, I'm pretty happy, but if you're not, you can always do Ctrl Z. And with this one, I'm actually going to rotate it even more. Okay, like this. Put it a little bit down and let's have a look now. Let's highlight, go to shapes on the right hand side and click weld. Yes, now I'm happy. So we've got one person ready.
I'm going to put that person to the side and let's move on to the next person. So here, let's have the neck exactly in the middle. As I told you, you can use any shapes from here. All you have to do is to click and drag. And actually, this is the very fun part of this card. I really like it. And if you ever create silhouette people, seriously, it is so much fun. So let's do it. Let's put the neck here. Rotate a little bit. Okay. Nearly there. So when this is ready, I'm going to move the head slightly lower. And let's add some hair as well. Let's go to the shapes and maybe this time I can add an ellipse. Let's move it down. Make it smaller. And let's create that element here. Okay, let's highlight all of it, weld and see what we've got. Oh, I'm happy with it. So I can keep that person. So you've got two people so far. Let's move on to the next person. So again, we need a neck. This is the very first bit you need. So let's scroll down to other shapes and literally get any shape with a rectangle shape. But as you can see here, the edges can be curved and that is absolutely fine. It doesn't really matter because we are going to weld it anyway. So when I'm happy with it, again, I'm going to rotate it. And this time I'm going to put it at an angle, like so. And then we have to rotate the head as well. So as you can see now, the person is nearly looking at the stage, right? And that's exactly what I want to achieve here. Because when you look at any audience, some people look literally straight and some have to look at the angle. And that's what I want to achieve here. Let's create some hair. So let's go to the ellipse. Maybe this time we can create a lady with a beautiful hair. So let's rotate this. Maybe slightly smaller. Okay, and then maybe we can have one more ellipse at the bottom of the hair. Let's make it smaller. Rotate. Okay, and maybe we can add the bun. So let's get another ellipse and create a bun. You can always stretch it. Literally, you can use whatever you want with those shapes. And that's what I really like about Canvas Workspace. There is literally no right or wrong whenever you create any shapes. And as you can see, even with those shapes, you can create amazing projects. Or maybe I can make this one longer. Rotate. Okay, let's have a look. When we highlight the person and weld. I'm pretty happy, but maybe the band could be at the top. No, let's leave it that way. Yes, I'm happy. So our next person is ready. So as you can see, if I move this one here, we do have that sense of 3D when they look at the stage. And that's what I really wanted to achieve. So let's have the next person. And maybe we need a person on the right hand side now. So we can move the head to the other side, like so. Let's put the head a little bit to the left-hand side. Let's create a neck. Um, oh, which shape? Yeah, this one will be fine. Oops, this one will be fine. Let's just make it smaller. And I, I wonder, have you ever created people using Canvas Workspace and different shapes? If you haven't, try it. It is so, so, so much fun. You definitely will love it. Okay, so I'm happy with the angle of the neck. And maybe let's use this shape now. So as you can see, all those elements come together super quickly. And you've got a variety of shapes on the left-hand side, which you can use to create literally anything you want. So if you feel inspired, just open your Canvas workspace or any other design software you've got for your electronic machine and start playing today. 
because trust me, it is worth the effort and you can literally personalize anything you want. And as you can see, you can rotate all the objects, make them smaller or bigger to create anything you want, which is really super, super cool. And let's see if we actually have enough. So what we can do, we can put them all together like so, so they overlap slightly. And then when I'm happy with it, oh, these people are too close. So what I can do, I can put that person here, this one here, and with the person I just highlighted, I can go to edit, flip, horizontal. And let's see, how, is that going to work? Yes. We've got a better angle. So we have to flip that person now. So edit, flip, flip horizontal. Yes, it is so much better because we've got gaps in between the people. So let's put them here. And then I'm going to highlight all of them and go to align objects on the right hand side and bottom. Okay, I'm going to move this one slightly. So I highlighted the person and using my arrow key left, I'm going to click twice. Yes, now I'm happy. Let's highlight all of them, shapes and weld on the right hand side. Okay, let's zoom out and let's see what we've got. Do we have enough people for our stage? For our audience, actually, I should say. No, we need to make even more. What about if I make them bigger? Okay, that works. I like it. So let's put them here and let's add at least two more people. Taking all those elements really is amazing because you can create literally whatever you want. And as you can see, you can actually flip them, which makes your job even easier. You can make them as small or as big as you want. So if you'd like some more Canvas workspace tutorials, please let me know in the comments down below what theme would you like to see? Because I'm pretty sure we can design together lots of amazing projects. And actually having Scan and CAD machine or Cricut really makes a difference because you can make your projects as big or as small as you want, especially with all those objects. So my cut in the end will be nearly seven inches, but you can scale it up or down, which is absolutely fabulous if you want to personalize even more projects. And what do you think about all those people here? Do you think they're easy to create? Or would you like to use a different trick to create silhouettes of people? Please let me know in the comments down below. And then it will be time to check if all the people fit on our card. We've got all those people here. And let's see how do they fit on under our theater stage. Let's have a look. Should I make them bigger? Yes, I think that works. Okay, so I'm going to color them, them in with black color. So to make your card now, what you need is actually to have that yellow, let's zoom out, to have that yellow element and we're going to cut it twice. And I'm going to delete the person. I don't need it. And let's, yes, yeah, so I'm going to cut the yellow panel twice, which is actually the brown here as well. Because with brown, what we can do, instead of cutting it twice, I can only cut that brown in the middle. So actually, I don't need the brown for the background of the stage and the very bottom. And then I'm going to use all the colors here to cut all my curtains and then black for the people. So I will see you when I finish cutting all the elements with my scan and cut machine. 
So it took me about 10 minutes to use my scan and cut machine and cut all the elements. I'm going to use that scrap piece of cut for underlayer when I use my alcohol marker. So as you can see, we've got the top of the curtain ready and I'm going to use alcohol markers from my stash. What's really good about this, you can mix and match different brands and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Just to add a little bit more interest and dimension to the whole project. Have you ever created a personal Slice, birthday or very special event card in Canvas Workspace if you haven't and if you want to have some suggestions for future workshops please let me know in the comments down below. As you can see now it is time to color in the side panels here and to be honest that card was very quick all together. I think together with designing, cutting and creating all those elements, it took me less than an hour, which I think for personalized cut, it is pretty good, right? So as you can see, there are a variety of pink and red colors here, because when I think about the theater, these are the colors that come to my mind. If you've been to a theater, what was the best show you've seen? Please let me know in the comments down below. So as you can see, I'm trying to add a little bit more interest and dimension but using some darker and lighter hues. And this way, this card is going to be super, super special. Have you ever created a card with theme of a theater? If you haven't, I really hope you'll feel inspired with my Canvas workspace tutorial and create your own version. Because as you saw, using just simple shapes, you can build absolutely amazing scenes. Now it is time for big curtains and again I'm going to use my alcohol markers. And what's really good about them, when they dry on your paper or cut, you can apply even more color. And that's exactly what I'm going to do later on. So what do you think about the pink curtains for a theater? Do you like them? Please let me know in the comments down below. So as you can see I'm starting with the lightest pink here first. And then later on, I'm going to add some more layers to create the depth. And what's really good about using alcohol markers, you can blend them beautifully. And that's what I really wanted to achieve here. At the end of this video, I'm also going to leave a different workshop for Canvas Workspace, how I created a card for someone who loves gaming. So if you'd like to know how to create your own, please check the video at the very end of this one. And if you haven't seen my video from Saturday for Cut Making Day, I have a giveaway and a very special free design paper. So you can check that video as well. The link is at the top right corner. And I'm also going to leave it at the end of this video if you're interested. And I'm pretty sure you will like it because I've got collaboration with two other absolutely amazing crafters and every single one of us created a free design for you and you can get my full digital collection Color Your World. So please check that video. And the link will be at the end of this one. So now it is time to create that wooden panel effect for theater. And first I'm going to use my pencil and jot some lines. As you can see, I'm using the grid on my mat just to make sure I'm going to have that 3D look. So at the bottom, I'm going to have very narrow strips and at the bottom wider. And this way, I'm going to have that 3D look. And you can use that trick as well. So now it will be time to use some brown alcohol markers to create that dimension. And as you can see, I'm using the chisel nib and I'm trying to go in the starburst effect here. And this way, I'm going to make sure that actually we have that 3D look. So if you ever want to create that effect, please use that technique. And how often do you use alcohol markers for your projects? Do you have your favorite brand? If you do, please let me know in the comments down below. What's really good about alcohol markers, you can really layer them beautifully. And that's what I'm going to do here with all those three different hues of brown. So here I'm putting the darker brown here just for extra dimension. And again, I'm following exactly the same pattern I created underneath. So this way we got some highlights peeking through that darker color, which is super cool, right? Now it is time to actually divide our wood effects here. And it does not have to be perfect because in real life it's never perfect, so do not worry if the lines are not super straight. 
Now we're going to create some vertical lines. And as you can see, I'm trying to offset every single second one. So this way we're going to have a sense of dimension. And the closer to the top, the smaller they get. The closer to the bottom, the bigger they get. And that's how we get that 3D look for the wooden pattern here. If you want, you can also use some wooden effect design paper. However, I didn't have any with that effect here. That's why I created it myself. Now let's add some shadows here just for extra interest. And when this is ready, you will see that the alcohol mark is really bled through it. That's why we've got the scrap piece of paper underneath. Now it is time to add a little bit of texture for more interest. And I do encourage you, don't skip that trick here, because that's what really makes a difference in all the projects. And I think even the small lines really add that amazing effect. So how often do you use alcohol markers to color in or actually create images for your projects? Please let me know in the comments down below. So as I told you, all together, this card comes together super, super quickly. And I do encourage you to play with all the shapes in Canvas Workspace because you will be amazed how creating and beautifully projects you can make. So now, as you saw, I'm adding a little bit more color on top of the curtains because the first layer dried completely so I can move on and blend it a little bit more. And this way, I'm going to make sure that it will look even more realistic. So now it will be time to put all those elements together. And first, we have to create the card base. So I've got my scoring board from Crafters Companion. And using that nearly 7 inches panel, I'm going to create a top flap. When this is ready, I'm going to use my liquid glue to apply the front and the back panels together. Super quick and simple. And this is my trick for any shaped cards. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, or if you would like to see more Canvas Workspace tutorials, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because every Monday I've got personalized projects on my channel. On a Thursday, I've got other videos. I will also try to create some Christmas makes as well for the weekends. However, for the last couple of weeks, I wasn't very, uh, let's say, healthy. I was pretty ill. That's why I skipped some of the Christmas projects. But luckily, I feel better now, and hopefully, I will have more time to create some Christmas makes for you. As you can see, now I'm putting all those mats here. With all the elements, I use my scan and cut machine. But I also want to add some dimension. So I've got double-sided foam adhesive. And it is crucial if you want to get that realistic look. If you do have some double-sided foam adhesive, please use it. Because it really, really makes a difference, especially on those amazing cuts. So as you can see, you don't really need to buy very expensive SVG files or actually cutting dice to create that cut. You can create it yourself. And I do encourage you to play with Canvas Workspace or any design software you've got for your electronic machine. Because this way you can personalize literally anything you want. And trust me, it is worth the effort and time because you learn something new every single time. So now when I'm happy with the double-sided foam adhesive, I'm going to peel it off with my pokey tool. And it is always a good idea to add few drops of liquid glue as well here. So this way it will be professionally finished and it will last for a very long time. And that's exactly what we want, right? So when these elements are ready, I also use Canva website and I created some other elements and actually I printed it in my printer and I fussy cut it just to personalize this cut even more. But first, let's add all the people we created. Did you have fun watching it, how they come together? Because it was so much fun to create them. And I do encourage you to create your own version of people here. So as you can see, I'm adding a tiny bit of double-sided foam adhesive on the heads and then slightly bigger at the bottom. So this way we're going to have a lot of dimension on this card. And that's exactly what I wanted. Because when you go to a theater, you can actually see the depth. And I, that's what I wanted to achieve here. If I'm successful, please let me know in the comments down below. 
And again, I'm going to use my pokey tool to peel off the backing and then add a few drops of liquid glue. So this way, as I told you, it's going to last for a very long time. And it's always a good idea to use black, especially for silhouette elements. So this way, you don't really need to add many details to your projects. And I think that is really, really cool. So now, as you can see, our theater scene is complete. Now it is time for a sentiment. And as I told you, I use Canva and I created that enjoy the theater sentiment. It will be time to add a little bit more dimension to it as well, because I thought let's make sure that it stands out because it is a theater in the end, right? So if you do have your favorite show from the theater, please let me know which one is it. I would like to see some of them because there are plenty in London. So, as you can see, now it is finished. The cut is complete. So, what do you think about this? And what do you think about the color palette? There is plenty of space to write your message inside, and the cut stands proudly on a flat surface. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Here you can see the other Canvas workspace tutorial and also the video from Saturday with free designs. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting! Bye for now!